Hello, fellow creators. I'm sitting here in my studio. I've got lo-fi playing. I've got full kombucha right here. The sun's out. It's a good day. I thought I'd make this video. And right now what I'm showing you is the Adobe Audition user interface. So when you open Audition, this is what you should see. This is pretty much what everybody was looking at in class the other day. We went over quite a bit, so I wanted to create this video. This could be a lengthy video. However, you'll be able to scroll and scrub ahead and come back. And at your on your time, you could get what you need from this. Hopefully, um, some of you will watch this. I don't expect that everybody's going to watch it or need to watch it, but this is why I'm making it. Um, I, we will go over this in class again, too, so please don't stress over this. There's a lot. There's a lot of buttons and dials in this program, but we're not going to be afraid of those. Um, I have the ability to pull in my keyboard so I can show you some keyboard shortcuts. Um, I think I'm going to lower the, I think I'm just going to, when I was a kid, we didn't have low, no, wait a minute, I can't say that. I just shut off the lo-fi. When I was a kid, we did have lo-fi and it was called hi-fi. And it was all the scratches in the record and the wobbly tape, cassette tapes and eight track tapes and all that and now you're listening to it and I think it's fantastic or you're listening to a digital version of hi-fi errors and everything so all right this is the user interface um, I like to start by creating a multi-track session so let's create a session first of all up here are your buttons for multi-track and waveform I believe Callie had you in waveform uh, first and I would like to start in multi-track first. So, and excuse the noise clicks and I don't feel like having my, so if I get plosive, sorry, but I just don't feel like putting the pop filter in there today. So let's go up and select multi-track and create an o Adobe Audition session. So you're gonna get this window and it's going to ask us to name this session and we're going to call it assignment whatever you want i'll call it assignment one now we have to figure out where to put this audition session project file so i'm going to browse it's going to open up a finder window i'm on a mac by the way and all the shortcuts i show you are mac shortcuts unfortunately i'm not a windows guy so i don't understand windows shortcuts right now um, and this is what I was doing before. So I'm going to just put that in the trash. Pretend that wasn't there. Okay. So it opens a finder window and I'm going to choose downloads at this point. And you know what? I think I'll create a new folder called tutorial and I'll just keep it short tut. And I had one up there, so pretend that's not there either. Let's move that to the trash. I did this video once already, and I messed it up. So my stress level was really good when I started this morning, and then it went way up because <laughs> I messed up this entire video. I already did it once. But that's what happens to us creators. So I'm going to choose that folder. So now it's going to go into that folder in Downloads. We're going to change if this is at set at 48 which it probably is by default we're going to drop this box down and change it to 44100 this has to do with uh, quality of the audio we're about to produce and we're going to get into that in another class and it's probably going to be set to bit depth of 32 and we're going to drop that down to 16 and if it's stereo let's change that to mono and then let's hit ok so now when I pull up my finder window 
and I go into downloads and I go into tutorial. Uh, you will see uh, it didn't go into the folder I wanted it to go into, so I messed that up. But anyway, you'll see assignment one. And it creates its own folder from the session I named it, and then it puts the uh, project file in here. So this little purple audition icon is this assignment right here. And when I close this assignment, I can go back into that icon, click on it, and open this project and continue working on it. This won't be what you submit to me as your assignment. I don't, I'm not looking for a project file. It's going to be an MP3 file. It's going to be the final product of this project. And I'll show you that uh, in class. I probably won't get to it in this video today, but no worries. So when you create a multi-track and you save it, you're presented with multiple tracks uh, to put audio onto. So let's do that. I'm going to go back into my finder. I'll open a new finder window. Here we go. And uh, I'm going to go into this drive, and I know what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose one of my clients, Liz Bruner. And let's see, who should we pick? Christina. Where's Christina? Christina Party. So these are raw files that I recorded in Ecamm Live. And this is Liz's file. So I'm going to take it from my finder, drag it. I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to drop it right here. Now I'm going to get this message that says the sample rate of this file does not match the sample rate of this session. So that's okay because I set it up at 441 and then 16 bits, but this file that I'm pulling in doesn't match that and it's going to convert it. So I'm going to say okay. And you can see now that this file is being converted to the specifications that I set just a moment ago when I saved this project file, this session. Those words are interchangeable. So it's going to take 23 more seconds, 22 more seconds. Scrub ahead 20 seconds if you don't want to wait. Oh, wait a minute. It happened quicker than I thought. There it is. Okay, so this is Liz Bruner. This is her track. Let me just check and make sure. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I happen to be right now in time selection tool. That's this icon right here. And if I click there, I can move the playhead. The playhead is this yellow line with the blue uh, knob at the top. All right. And what I'm going to do right now, Chris. Yeah, that's Liz. So you know what? Let's go up here into this area here and just click on that. And let's put her name Liz. So now I know that's Liz's track. Simple but keeps me understanding where I am because these tracks can move. By the way, this is the time selection tool. This is the move tool, this guy over here. So and you'll see when I click on that, the icon changes to what I have selected. And now I can grab this and move it and I can bring it down here. So now I'm no longer on the Liz track. So. This just helps me understand what I'm doing. Okay, so let's grab the other file. Opening a finder window. I should have left it open. And we're going back into Liz. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm ready to mask. I got my bandana. If I have to, I'll mask up. <coughs> I have, uh, I'm not sick. I have COPD. So if you ever hear me cough in class, that's why. Christina Party. And we'll go into Ecamm Live again. And this is Christina. So I'm going to, again, just drag and drop. I don't know why I'm having trouble dragging and dropping. Today. And again, it's not matching, so it's going to convert that file. 
I'm hitting OK. And it's cooking. I can move this now. Yeah, okay, so after it loaded, I can move this and line it up. So now the interview should be in sync because I've got them both lined up. So the first couple of things that I do as an audio editor, editor and Callie showed you in class, is compression and limiting. So I'll explain a lot of the user interface as I do it. I don't want to take the time to go over every little button. These things are going to become, um, you're going to become aware of them and you're going to know how to use them. And it's going to become very intuitive. So I promise. Uh, I know this is very confusing, all these cards and panels and everything, but this will become second nature after a while. The more you use it, the better you will get at it. But right now we're looking at uh, some 28 seconds or so, almost 30 seconds of the entire interview, of the entire files of these tracks, the length. So I want to zoom out and I want to see the whole thing. I want to see the whole project. So I'm going to use a shortcut and I'm going to hit th uh, this key uh, right here. And I don't even know what that key's called. It's got a, a slash and a, I think that's a forward slash underneath it. But at any rate, when you hit that key, watch what happens. Boom. I'm now looking at the entire file. So it is 24 minutes in duration right now. And a lot of this is just them talking at the beginning. And, you know, there's all kinds of editing that needs to be done here. There's a lot of cleanup that needs to be done. So now that I've got the two files in there, um, let's, just for the heck of it, I want to show you a section here. And again, if I go into the time selection tool here, the little uh, symbol that looks like a... Uh, an eye, I guess. I don't know. What does that look like? But if I just click anywhere, now I've moved the playhead. The playhead is the yellow bar with the blue toggle at the top. And now I can zoom in by hitting my plus key. And it's going to zoom onto the playhead. Wherever the playhead is, that's where I'm zooming into. I can toggle back out using the minus key. And I can go back in. These controls, by the way, are all in this, er uh, in this area over here. Oops, you can't move out of the way. Okay, so they're all in this area right here. I'm going to move myself back. But I just find keyboard shortcuts to be more efficient and a better workflow. So I encourage you to learn as many keyboard shortcuts. And that goes for everything you do on your laptop or on your desktops. Uh, keyboard shortcuts are your friend. Trust me. I didn't like using them for a couple of years. And then once I got rolling and it's like muscle memory. I just, I move so much more quickly. But anyway, let's look at this track. And I want to show you why we compress. And before, okay, I think this is a good example. Okay, so I'm going to put the playhead here. <laughs> no, I think, you know. Ooh, that's loud as hell. Um, sorry about that. Just turn the system all the way down just a bit. <laughs> no, like I think, you know, I, I when you were talking about, you know, going for it and and I'll just share with. OK, so you can see right there when she was excited, perhaps she was closer to the microphone or she spoke louder and then her volume dropped in her voice right there. So this is something that we want to correct because it's not easy to listen to. When you get that punch in one sentence and then it's really quiet and you're like, 
so that you can't really hear it and that you're churning up the radio in the car i mean you're churning up the audio level in the car or whatever it's just um hard to listen to and it's not professional so we are going to compress this file and that means that these peaks here uh, are going to either match we're going to pull these low points up in volume or we're going to crunch these down a bit and bring these up a little bit there's all kinds of ways of compressing i'm just going to show you a very simple method now for this effect compression compression this time around I am going to do the effect in the waveform mode over here. I could do this effect, this compression, here in multi-track mode, but we won't, and I don't know why they do this, they won't, we won't see a change in this uh, waveform. This is the waveform, and we won't see it change. But if we go into... Um, waveform mode, we will see it actually physically change. And I want you to see that. So there's two different ways to get into waveform mode. You can click up here. And because we have that track selected, we have now pulled that track. Oops, wait a minute. Pardon me. We have now pulled that track into waveform mode. So this is, and toggle back and forth is very easy. Multi-track, clicking on multi-track, clicking on waveform. Now, I'm going to put an effect on this, again, in waveform. And I'm going to do that by going up to the effects menu item here. Coming down to amplitude and compression here. And then selecting out of that menu, dynamics. So effects, amplitude and compression, dynamics, click. And this is probably going to go to a default setting for you, which is uh, we're looking at auto gate, compressor, and expander. And by default, none of these are active right now. You have to click in here to make them active. So we don't want auto gate. We do not want expander. Those are for future lessons, but let's compress. So we're going to click here and now I've checked off the compressor. So this panel is now active and I want you to know that now you can click and hold and change the values of these granular settings. Um, at this point, all I want you to do change our three settings the threshold and i can either manipulate this image of a knob or i can click in here and now select minus 18 which is what i want so i always set this i don't always but most of the time most frequently i set this at minus 18 db this setting i change to four the ratio and we'll get into detail. I don't want to bog you down right now. I just want you to um, understand conceptually how we, what it looks like to compress a file. So we'll choose 18, 4, and then in, we're going to skip the attack and the release. And we're going to go right to makeup gain, and we're going to put the value of 7 in there. So now I've got minus 18, 4, 7. Don't care about these two, and I'm going to apply it. And when I apply it, you're going to see the waveform change physically. There we go. The peaks have come down a bit, and the, uh, the lower parts have come up a bit. It may not be perfect, but I wanted you to see that change in the waveform. And now when we go back to multi-track, um, What happened? It didn't change. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I must have other files from when I did the first video. The, the, the disaster of my first video this morning is still impacting me. So let me take a sip of kombucha. Reset. Okay, so now I'm, now I'm on the right track, pardon me. 
We're going to do the same thing again. We're looking at Liz Bruner's track, and I'm going to go to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, Dynamics. And now you're going to notice that uh, because I had selected Compressor the last time, it's sticky. So it became custom, and it remembered my values, minus 18, 4, 7. And I like that. I, I like to have it this way, and then if I need to change it, I will. But I'm, I'm frequently using these settings. So now I'm going to hit Apply. And there is the change. And now when we go to Multitrack, you will see that the change is here now indeed. So it looks a lot better. Um, Television after 28 years, and what was I going to do? And what I... And let's go back to that area kind of that we were right <laughs> oh my gosh yeah you yeah. you have such a wonderful celebrity following i know that katie couric's a big fan you just mentioned her and having lunch with her so how and where can we get your product she you can hear she's pounding the table um and i can't get her to stop doing that but we'll deal with that um but anyway i have now successfully taken the peaks and brought them down and brought the low points up so i've got a a more level um, track for Liz. However, it's still too loud. Doing my best. Well, I think it, it's like the burner analogy. When you look down here at this space here, this is the level, and you can see colors moving and the meter moving. Gee, that you just shared with us. It's like, yes, yeah, some days we're on top of the world, and other days it's like, I don't know what. I and she's bouncing up there around minus 5 dB, and you can see it getting red, and it's just too loud. And what I want to do is, um, now that I've compressed this track, I want to put a limiter on this track. So I don't want it to go up over a certain volume. And I typically choose minus 12 decibels. And that is right around here, minus 12 decibels. I like that. It's a good, comfortable volume. So I'm going to... Now create this effect in multi-track. I'm not going to go back to waveform. I'm going to stay here in multi-track because I can make effects happen here as well. And it happens in this card. And you may be on markers. You may be on metadata. You may be on properties. But we're going to be on effects rack here. This is what you should be able to select this and now see this panel open up with all these different uh, slots. I can put 16 effects on this track right here. I'm going to use one right now, so I'm going to go up to one. And I, and I need to be, I need to have this track, track selected. So that's why I know it's selected because it gets highlighted and this color bar over here gets lit up. So I need to be here on this track and I am going to click the arrow and notice that that very same uh, menu, those very same menu items that I got when I was up here now appear here. So I'm in amplitude and compression again, but this time I'm going to go to hard limiter. So I'm clicking hard limiter. Um, this is the only granular control I'm going to manipulate in this particular uh, effect. I'm going to change the decibel level to minus 12 is where I like it. And now let's watch that bar down there. I'm going to leave this window open. I'm just going to move it slightly out of our way. I, I, I love the fact that you can move those around or put them on a different screen. Well, I think it, it's like the burner analogy that you just shared with us. It's like, yes, yeah, some days we're on top of the world, and other days it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, we haven't done her yet, but you can see that we've shut the door at minus 12 on Liz. As a matter of fact, let me do this. Let me um, show you that. Right now, I, she's talking over her. Christina and Liz are talking at the same time. And I really don't want to hear that right now. So I'm going to show you that you can come over to these buttons here in this track and mute. So I just muted Christina. So now let's do that again. Shared with us. It's like, yes, some days we're on top of the world. And other days it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh.
You now, the other really cool thing about doing the effects here in multi-track is that if I close this program and come back in, I can manipulate this effect again. Any effect that you make in the waveform mode is permanent. Once you close the file and open the project back up, um, the session back up, you can't undo compression. You can't undo cut, cutting the clip. You can't undo limiting or anything like that. So this is important to know. Here in multi-track editor, I can change them. Uh, so notice that right now that effect is not here, and that's because I'm on Christina's track. So let me just click here, and now you can see the hard limiter is right there. This is important to know which track you're on because sometimes you're going to have the same effect on both tracks, and in this case we will. So the other really cool thing is as I'm playing, and oh, by the way, I don't think I showed you this yet. Um, in order to make the uh, get the playhead to run, I'm just hitting the space bar. You, you have such a wonderful celebrity following. I know that Katie Couric's a big fan. You just mentioned her and having... And to make it stop, I'm just hitting the space bar. So I'm toggling the playhead on and off. Having lunch with her. So how and bar. where can we get your product? Really convenient, really super easy, good thing to know. Let me get rid of my keyboard. I mean, you could be down here in the playback controls if you want, but I just think that's wonky and clunky, and I think it's just easier to hit the play bar. Uh, the space bar. The other thing that you can do here with this window is open. You you have such a wonderful celebrity following. I know that Katie Kirk. You can toggle this effect on and off. You can also do it here. But as you are real time listening, I can see the effect. Um, a big fan. You just mentioned her and having lunch with her. So how as I said, if I can also toggle it off and see its original volume. How and where can we get your products? What's the website? I'll just pull it Pretty back. following. I know that Katie Couric's a big fan. You just mentioned her and having lunch with her. So it's how on. and where can we get your products? What's the website? It's off and you can see the change and you can hear the change. And I think that's a powerful tool. That's a powerful feature of Adobe Audition. So now I'm going to make this window go away from my view and I'm going to click the red button. I'm not doing anything to that effect. As you can see, when I click it away, it's still here, and I can pull that window back up anytime by selecting, going into the white arrow and selecting Edit Effect, and now my window's back. So I'm just making this uh, disappear from my view. But that effect is now, uh, you have the ability to manipulate that at any point in the future. So we have compressed, and we have limited that track. And that's the two most important things that an audio editor will do at the very beginning of a session. Now let's unmute Christina. Oh, we didn't name Christina. Let's do that. Let's go right into this track. And let's put her name in there. Christina. Okay, so now I know which track is which. I can move these tracks, by the way. I can grab this track, see how I'm grabbing it, and I can drag it down to here. I can also put it back up here. So it's very flexible. This program's really flexible. And I'm going to hit my minus button keyboard on the keyboard, and I'm going to zoom out. But I want to do the same thing. I want to do the same thing to Christina. Now, again, I'm on her track, so there's nothing here. If I go to Liz, you'll see our hard limiter there. I could do the compressor here, but I won't see a change in the waveform. And I want you to be able to see that change. That's why I'm saying let's go to waveform here. Now, another way to get, I, I have her selected. So if I click here, we'll go to the waveform editor. But I could also double click anywhere in her track. Like right here, I'm going to double click. Boom. And now I've brought up the waveform. I can go back to multi-track up here, and I can go back to waveform here. So let's do the same thing. Let's go up to effects. 
Let's go to amplitude and compression. Let's go to dynamics. Oh, look, it remembered. It got sticky and it remembered that I'm at 18, 4, and 7. I like that. And, I'm, and I only have compressor checked off. I don't have auto gate. I don't have expander. And I'm going to apply. And we're going to see that waveform change. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. Go back to multi-track. And now we can see that Christina is looking good, Hollywood. Pitching him on this idea, but I went for it and stayed on him for about four years. Um, you know, we made samples. She's a little too loud, too. So, um there's other ways to change volume level in a clip or a track. And one way is it, this volume control here will control the volume of this track, no matter how many clips I have in it. This little control here, let's, uh, let's get the playhead here and zoom in so I can show you that a little bit more closely. If I click on this and move this, I can raise and lower the volume, but only for the clip that I'm in. This, is gonna, uh, this isn't going to do the whole track. Now, I'm going to undo that, so I'm going to hit Command. Oops, sorry. I'm going to hit Command Z, and I, I, I have just undone undone that volume change there. So command Z is a good shortcut to know uh, because it will undo your last and, and repeated command Z's will undo, undo, undo. Um, it's just a handy keyboard shortcut to have command Z. The other way you can go backwards in time, if you don't have a time machine, is in this panel down here, you have a couple of different views. One is history, and this is everything that I've done right here, and I can go back in time here if I, if I need to. So now we have compressed Christina, and now I want to put a limiter on here. So I'm going to go back into amplitude. I'm, I'm in the effects rack, and I've gone on to amplitude and compression, and I'm going to hard limiter. And this doesn't get sticky, this one. So I could create a sticky if I want, but uh, I'm going to go back to minus 12 for her as well, equal to Liz. And let's find a spot to click on. So much, and thank you for that. Love I'm hitting the space bar to play and stop. Lovely introduction. Um, I really appreciate that. And see, we stopped her right at. We shut the door right at negative. Thank 12. you for having me. So happy to I'm be here. I'm delighted. I'm so what we have right now is, and I'm just going to make this window go away. Uh, and if we go back on her track, we now see we have limiter on her here that can be changed in the future. It can be deleted. Also, you can remove that effect if you want in the future. But we have just compressed and limited this, both of these tracks. We get a really good interview so far happening here. There are uh, many other things to consider. There are some uh, serious edits that have to be made. First of all, the beginning of this is us chit-chatting. All right. And what I'm going to do right now, Christina, is I'm going to have like five to ten seconds of just ambient silence. So we haven't really, she hasn't started the interview yet. She's telling Christina, this is how we do this front, front end. We're going to be quiet for ten seconds, and we're trying to get the ambient noise in the room. So if there's an air conditioner on that we can't control or there's some kind of steady state frequency noise that we might want to remove later here in post-production, uh, we always start with 10 seconds of everyone being quiet. No breathing. And then I'll go into my introduction okay. and then go with my questions and we'll just see where the conversation goes, okay? Sounds great. Sounds great. Awesome. Okay, here we go. And you can hear it. You can hear that there's um, there's some, and I don't know if that's on her. Here we go. Let me check. Um, let me mute Liz. Now I'm only listening to Christina. Yeah, it's Christina's track. Let's do the opposite of that. Let's mute Christina and unmute Liz. 
Yeah, so, so we were in a quiet room. I was with Liz uh, in a conference room at a building where she lives. And it's a pretty dead room, so it, it's, it's nice. But we have this. Um... Um, okay, here we go. That's pretty egregious. Uh, I hope that's coming through on this audio. Maybe I can crank it up just a little bit more for you to hear that. Let's try that again. Okay, so so let's do it. Let's do another effect. I wasn't going to do this yet, but let's do another effect on Christina. Let's go in here again. Now we're at uh, slot number two. We're going to put the second effect on her, and let's go to noise reduction restoration. And let's just choose denoise, see what we get. So we get this rack effect, and I'm going to play. I'm not getting what I thought I was going to get here, so. It's a little bit better. So I selected this heavy noise reduction rather than the default. Now I can increase the amount of noise reduction here. And that's much better, but that's going to affect her voice. So, okay. But I have the ability to toggle this on and off. So I'm going to leave it for now. We'll see how her voice sounds with that effect on it. Oh, great. Sounds great. It's not too bad. Thank you so much. And thank you for that lovely introduction. First of all, this is a great example of bad audio. So even though Liz sends a, an email out to her, all her guests, like the Gronkowskis, if you saw that in class, uh, many people just, you know, to them, it's just a Zoom call. And we try to get them to use either uh, wired earbuds that have the little mic, the, you know, the microphone here at the lapel. That sounds a little bit better than a, we have $2,000 computers with $2 microphones in them. So we try to get better production values from the guest, but it's tough and we hardly ever do. So that this is really bad audio. This is some wonky computer and she's in some reflective room where there's all kinds of ambient noise. There's some things we can do to help repair this, and there are some programs, uh, but we'll do that in, an, in another lesson. Um, I really appreciate that. And So she says an um here, and after Liz introduces her, she stumbles a bit, and then here, let's listen to it. Christina, welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much, and thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I really appreciate that, and... Thank you for having me. So happy to I'm be here. Delighted. I'm delighted. And then they kind of talk over each other. And Liz says, I'm delighted Thank twice. you for having me. So happy to I'm be here. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Okay, so we're going to clean that up. But first thing we're going to do is get rid of this front end. This is all chatter. The interview doesn't start till right here. So there's a bunch of different ways to do that. When you are in uh, the move tool and you get right to the edge of that clip, you're going to see it turn into a red bracket. And you can now change the clip physically. And I did both of them individually. I'm going to do my Command Z to undo those. One, two, Command Z. And I want to show you that when you are in the Move tool, you can highlight two tracks. So I am just highlighting both tracks. And now when I'm here and it turns into the red bracket, they'll both move at the same time. And because I have them both selected, I can drag them back toward the beginning. Now I'm going to leave some space because eventually there's going to be music on this track that's going to come in full volume, fade when Liz starts talking. Um, so let's just uh, undo that too. And... Okay, I get back to having that 
unwanted audio in there, there's another way to get rid of this. And that is using the blade tool. So back up here in the tool section, there's this razor blade. And I just cut right there. And now I can select and delete both of those. There's yet another way. I th there's more. Wait, there's more. So let's undo that. Command Z, Command Z. We're back to where we were. I'm going to do a ripple delete. So I've selected the time selection tool again. And I'm going to click and grab all of this, highlight all of that. And now I'm going to go up to clip. And where's my ripple delete? Or is that edit? Ripple delete is in edit, pardon me. And I have some choices here. I can do it in uh, the time selection in all tracks, the time selection in a clip, time selection in selected track, but I want selected tracks. So I believe if I do this, see if that's going to work. Yeah. Okay. So I just cut that whole section out and bang, everything moved to the left to where I was, to where the beginning of that uh, cut was. So uh, I just effectively cut all that section out of both tracks at the same time. There's another way to do it, and it's a keyboard shortcut. So I just did Command Z and brought it back. Now I can just simply on my keyboard, which is much easier, hit Shift, Command, Delete. So let's see that in real time. Shift, Command, Delete. Boom. Move this out of the way. And you can see that the same thing happened. So I'm going to undo that. Command Z. And I'm going to hit Shift, Command, Delete. And I've removed the unwanted audio there. Now we start with Liz. My guest today admits she did not grow up saying she wanted to be an entrepreneur. Far from it. In fact, she went into sales for a tech company. But this millennial... Oh, and I must have undone that effect, too, because I can hear the noise again. So... Noise reduction. Let's try D Hummer this time. Neil turned her side hustle into a million dollar bona fide business. Chris I don't think that's going to do what we want it to do. So I'm going to remove the D Hummer. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do D noise again and crank it up for a tech company. But this millennial turned her side hustle into a million dollar bona fide business. Christina Party is the... Now, some clients are picky and some are not. I have one client that does not care if her breaths are heard. Now, because we compress this, we also, you know, we brought up the lows and squashed the highs, but we brought up breaths. We brought up the some of the quieter stuff too. So and there's no way ar um, around that uh, when you just compress. But here's a breath right here. Christina Par Christ Now, if I highlight that section and hit the space bar and play it, I'm going to loop that. <laughs> so, and the way you get that to loop is you have to click this little loop button down here. If I click that off. Yes. It's just going to play once. But if I put it on loop, now I know that I've got just her breath selected. So what do I want to do with that breath? Do I want to cut it out? Do I want to do a ripple delete? I don't know. It, it might mess up the cadence of her speech. I could. Let's do it. Let's, let's go shift, command, delete. And I always, whenever I make an edit, I always go back a few seconds and listen to the edit. Bonafide business. Christina Park. I don't like it. 
I don't like that it's color bona fide business. Christina Park. And it's upcut. It sounds horrible. So I'm going to hit Command Z. And instead, we're going to silence this. And the way we do that is we go up to Clip. And we silence time selection. This is the selection we have uh, created here. And we're going to... Now, I created a shortcut. I'm going to show you that in another lesson or in a different class. You can create a shortcut for this. So all I have to do is hit Z. By default, it's not there. Z is not there. So we're actually going to click here. And what happened was, oh, I was in the wrong track. This yellow bar represents volume. So I need to be here. And now I'm going to do that again. So clip, silence, and select a clip. So what I did was, you can see the volume got lowered right there. Business. Christina Park. The breath is now gone. Business. Chris I'll undo that. <laughs> I'll redo it. By business. Christina Party is. It's much better that way by silencing that breath. It's much better. Now I silenced that. It doesn't really matter that I did that. But I also want you to see here that if you go on this yellow line uh, with your arrow and click, you now have created this blue dot. And that's a toggle point. So and if I click, on, say I make another one here, I can now drag the volume down. There. Christina Party is the founder. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I could have made this manual. I could have made this silence manual that way. <clears throat> this is helpful when you want to lower a music bed before somebody, right as somebody's speaking. But I just want you to know that you can now manipulate and change the volume at any point in any way by manipulating, <clears throat> excuse me, the yellow line. And I'm going to undo those. Now let's move ahead where she greets the guest. Now there's more breaths there. And I'll, for this client, I go after those. <laughs> Christina, well. Got rid of that one. Now there's a, there's too much of a gap here before Christina responds. Guest. Thank you so much. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I really appreciate that. And thank you for having me. So happy to I'm be delighted. here. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. All right, let's fix up that introduction. So first of all, I'm going to do a ripple delete here and get rid of this space here. So shift, command, delete. Play that back. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, I really appreciate that. And thank you for having me. So happy to I'm be here. Here's an um. Um, I really. Um, I really. Um, 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 um. What should I do here? Should I silence that? Should I cut it? Let's cut it. Let's see how that sounds. Thank you so much, and thank you for that lovely introduction. I really appreciate that, and. I don't mind that. I'm gonna leave that. I really appreciate that, and thank you for having me. So happy to I'm be here. I'm delighted, but. Here's a problem. They start talking over each other. She gets confused, says the same thing over. So let's, I did, I'm, let's silence this. Having me. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. And we don't want to. I'm delighted. So let's just ripple delete that. Now you can begin to see what a workflow looks like. I really appreciate that. And thank you for having me. I'm delighted to have you here. That sounds a little upcut, though. I'm delighted. That sounds a little upcut to me. And I'll show you a little other technique with volume, and it's called a fade in. So whenever you're in a clip, these are now clips, by the way. This is the entire track, but these are clips within the track because we've made cuts. Every time you start at a new clip, you get this icon up here, which is the little square with the light and dark. Uh, halves, I guess you'd call that, triangles. But if you click on that and drag it 
this way you can create a fade in and oftentimes this will take the curse out of an upcut let's see if we get that that and thank you for having me i'm delighted to have yeah I, I like that much better it's less less egregious i'm delighted to have you here but you gotta first explain the name stick and what it stands for i'm gonna let you handle that one <laughs> Are we allowed? Are we going to bleep me out? We are that allowed. Okay? We are allowed. Yes. Listeners. Um, well, yes, the company. Uh, the so all this stuff is nonsense, and she doesn't start really answering the question. The company. Uh so that's where I'm going to bring this. Uh, I'm going to take all of this and silence it. That one. <laughs> we are allowed. We are allowed. Yes. The company. And I'm just going to grab from here. And do a ripple delete one <laughs> the company uh the acronym is stick but it stands for shit that i knit um which you know for most people so you can see she was an ummer she was a you know really interesting guest she does have a company called shit that i knit it's awesome um she kind of got popular on social media and has a thriving business but there was a lot of work here so when i Go back out and look at this entire file. Twenty, right now it's at twenty-three minutes or so. Um, I'm looking at about two hours of editing time to complete this. So that's pretty close. It's sometimes it's it, it it works out to about ten. Every ten minutes is an hour of editing. Um, it depends. It depends on what your client wants. I, I have to do very little editing on Liz. She's a television personality. She was on Channel Five. She was a news anchor in Channel Five for 25 years here in Boston. Um, she's well spoken. She writes out her questions, so it makes a big difference. So I don't have to do much editing on her. But but Liz doesn't do a lot of the talking. She's a good interviewer. She asks the questions, and she lets the guest answer. So that's what you're looking at here. There's a lot of work to do here. There's a lot more effects that I can show you, but I'm going to stop here. Uh, I am going to, just for the heck of it, export what we have right now. So I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go to Export. Then I'm going to go to Multitrack Mixdown, and I'm going to say the entire session. This entire session, I'm going to pull this down as an mp3 file so where do i want here it is assignment it's already gets named to the session name assignment one but it gets an under uh, a underscore uh, mix down dot mp3 this is a dot mp3 file this is what you're going to submit to me when the project is completed and you're happy with it you're going to submit to me uh, an exported mp3 file so I would get in the habit of, of not only keeping this assignment one, but put your name up there too. It would be so helpful to me for filing purposes. So let's say um, we call this one assignment one underscore Dan. And this is the way somebody spelled it in class, Tebow. That's really helpful to me. Puppies and kittens. I'll be all happy if you do that. Um, so we won't worry about this right now, but notice that it is sampled to what I had set it to. Uh, it's mono. And we'll chain, we'll, I'll teach you about uh, kilobytes per second. This has to do with the size of the file as well and the quality. Um, and I'm just going to hit OK. No, I don't want to put it there. Sorry, I'm not going to hit OK. Always have to direct it to where you want it to go. So we were in where we were downloads, tutorial, or no, uh, assignment one. And I'm going to save it. So I've directed it there. Everything else is cool. There's much more work, of course, to do this. I would not pass this in at this point, or I would not publish this as a podcast at this point. Let's go to my uh, finder and we'll go to downloads. We'll go to assignment one and there it is right there. So this is just a baked in file. This has both tracks 
with those edits I performed without in the raw file that I haven't edited is right here to listen to. So if I click on that. My guest today admits she did not grow up saying she wanted to be an entrepreneur. Far from it. In fact. And we'll notice that because we set up the parameters the way we did, and because this is an MP3 file, this file is actually 22.7 megabytes. That's a pretty light file. And this is important because you don't need high quality all the time with audio production. Sometimes you do, but especially if it's a podcast, you want them to be, you want 20, 30 minutes to be around this size. And we'll get into that later. It has to do with bandwidth for your RSS feed and things like that. But um, it's just something I, I want you to be aware of. So that is it. Thanks for watching this through. And I, I intended this video for the podcasting and intro to audio class. Uh, it was intended for you. But if you want to share it with anybody, you please do. Uh, and I will see you in class. Thanks, everybody.